Uh, Deepak Fertilizers talk a little bit more about their key levers for growth and earnings with Molik Mehta, the CEO and ED at Deepak Nitride. Thanks so much for joining in. Um, to begin with, the performance this time around has been backed by volume growth. Um, uh, the advanced intermediary margins have remained subdued. So what is the outlook on each of your segments? So across the board, uh, the performance has been more driven by the Indian sentiment, more driven by uh, the ability of Indian manufacturing companies to be able to cater to the Indian demand. And in some places, for example, in Deepak Nitrite on a standalone basis, when we are supplying to AgChem majors, the quarter was a little bit muted because their year ends in December. And in the long view, this is uh, by and large expected to remain stable and improve from a relatively low base. And when it comes to the other segments like textiles, dyes, uh, paper, etc., you will see that there is a volume-led improvement sequentially. This is expected to continue. And over a period of time, once supply chains are sorted out a little bit, you will also start to see a consistent improvement in margin. Sure, Malik, point taken, but let's talk about the margins a bit more. They have stayed between the 15 to 17 percent range for the longest time. You are increasing the share of value added products as well. Does it mean that there is at least a bit of an upside on margins going forward? Yeah, so this is exactly what I have also alluded to in the past that what ends up happening is that the standalone business should expect to see a normalized margin. EBITDA margin of about 20%. Now, once our investments, our first tranche of investments gets commissioned, there's both upstream and downstream investment. And that will have on the broader Deepak Nitride standalone balance sheet, a 2% improvement in EBITDA. In Deepak Phenolics, what we will see, as I mentioned earlier, is volume-led expansion. And as we debottleneck, as we go downstream into products such as uh, MIBK, MIBC, you will see a one to two point, uh, one to two percent improvement in EBITDA on that as well. So overall, on a blended basis, you can expect to see on uh, in a sustainable uh, market situation a two percentage point improvement in EBITDA, two to three percentage point in uh, EBITDA. Now, as for the channel checks with manufacturers and traders in China, some of the popular chemical commodities are like phenol are facing demand. That's pretty strong. There's fresh orders as well coming in largely after the Chinese uh, Lunar New Year. Is this demand sustainable? So, to be honest, it uh, and I have also highlighted this in the past, it pays to be cautiously optimistic. But in Q4, one should not look at extending the perception, which is built in the first two months of January and February, because these are also months where you have this Chinese new uh, lunar year, and you have uh, you know the winter season when, generally speaking, there is low demand and supply. So I would hesitate from extrapolating this. Nonetheless, uh, you know what you are seeing is also something that uh, our team is seeing. However, this is only as of the last one week, as the country has slowly started to reopen. Now, uh, I take it in its stride. And we, as I mentioned earlier, we remain cautiously optimistic moving forward. Okay, that point is taken. But separately, uh, one of the major acetone players in the world, Ineos, had declared force majeure at one of their plants in Germany, right? Is this an opportunity that you'd like to capitalize? To be honest, there, is a, there are a lot of uh, short-term opportunistic uh, situations that do come about our way, including what you mentioned. There are also similarly, uh, you, you would hear about the extreme cold and uh, cold snap that's taking place in the U.S., around the U.S. Gulf Coast. So all of these do uh, offer interesting opportunities for arbitrage. And in the meanwhile, we also have to see how the global freight rates are panning out. We take these opportunities as they come, and it certainly improves our balance sheet. But if I was to project moving forward, whether this is going to be consistent, no. But at that time, there will be other opportunities that come up that our goal is to be close to the ground. 
And our goal is to be tactically able to take advantage of such opportunities. Right, Malik. You know, um, also in terms of that um, rupees 9,000 crores MOU that you've signed with the Gujarat government recently and the MMA and PMMA as well and uh, Aniline also. So if it is possible to share some light in terms of around the capacities that you plan to set up, what is your revenue margin expectation from these facilities as well? Okay, so to start off with, with regards to uh, the products, the products that you've mentioned are the products which are, which are easy to announce, right? Uh, what we have not gone into detailing out are the specialty chemicals that will be invested in and that will be commissioned over the next year, two years, because these are all under uh, NDAs. And hence, we don't go into... Uh, you know, further uh, breaking up the kind of capex investments that we're making. Nonetheless, the capacities that we are putting in our world scale, aniline, MMA, and it's downstream PMMA, polycarbonates, uh, which require bisphenol A and it's upstream phenol and acetone. These are all part of what we're creating as the largest petrochemical complex in the country. And if one is to look at the processes that we are looking at employing to manufacture these, they will become the key building blocks for a lot of downstream investment. Large part of it will be done by Deepak and some part of it will be done by partners who are strategically aligned with Deepak. So we are creating, a, a, you know, in a sense, a hub and spoke model for the Indian chemical industry. We are extremely bullish on India's growing presence in the chemical landscape worldwide. And we don't believe that it is at the expense of other regions like Europe and China. We believe that India moving forward will be the place for cost competitive, safe and large scale manufacturing of complex chemicals. We aim to be in a pole position with that. And finally, in your annual report, it was mentioned that you're establishing new chemistry platforms for photochlorination uh, to cater to the diverse needs of India's 5G electronics, EV, etc. What are these new segments? Okay, so these are uh, these two points are both correct but cross-linked. So when we're talking about photohalogenation and uh, high-pressure fluorination, by and large, these will service India's growing ability to supply complex, fine and specialty chemicals. And there are other investments also that we're making. Uh, the applications that you mentioned are linked to material science. And those have certain properties like, uh, a, you know, conductivity, insulation, uh, rigidity, those things. And those go into applications such as 5G, EV boxes, uh, medical devices, etc. So those are what we call material science, meaning polycarbonates, polyurethanes, and uh, fibers. So for example, we will manufacture intermediates for uh, material which will be used for ballistics as well, which will help uh, you know, to protect humans on one hand, and it will also uh, provide with a very low weight, high performance, high heat resistance properties for aircraft manufacturing. These are all downstream applications and we will be manufacturing the key intermediates which will have certain properties that they can impart okay so uh before i let you go i have to ask you this question about fi25 as well given the low base and things looking up should we expect a major uptick in fi25 i think we can all agree that if we're comparing fi25 with okay. fi24 it's a pretty low base so I think that most good chemical companies will be able to improve in FY25. Uh, I remain confident about that, not just cautious, but I do remain confident because we will also have several uh, you know, capacities, brownfield and greenfield, which will be commissioned over the next 12 months. And those will also add a reasonable amount to our top line as well as bottom. Okay, thank you so much, Malik, for joining in with us this morning on ET Now. It's a pleasure having you on the show as well as understanding in terms of the outlook for the company going forward as well. Uh